Our dynamical systems appear in two versions always. You know, from physicist's point of view, it tends to be natural to think in continuous time because lots of problems that we are interested in are posed in continuous time. I should say there are many, many very good problems. You know, like, I don't know, refreshing the Google vector, which are not done in continuous time, but they're perfectly good problems. So what happens when you have discrete time? Now, discrete time is not so fancy. Uh, the Jacobian is defined the same way. Jacobian is a derivative of a map, and discrete time is just a special map, or what you call time is an integer, but uh, Jacobian doesn't care about that parameter, it cares about variation in space. So Jacobian, ij, a discrete time, let's call it n, is defined as my map starting at x0, going to n time steps forward. And, you know, how does it vary in direction i if I perturb initial condition in direction z? Or if you want to, you can write it as dx at time n. Well, okay, I can put it aside. For discrete time, we tend to not put it in a bracket, but just a subscript. So that Jacobian, it's the same definition, continuous and discrete. But for discrete time, we can use a very famous rule. You know, f of zero is identity, nothing changes. f of one, you iterate it once, and we will use short abbreviation without one in here. So if I step one time in four, forward in time and I step again, so I start at my initial point, step once and step twice, and I take a partial derivative of this thing, then I can use a chain rule, because this is a function of a function. So this by chain rule is derivative of fi with respect to xk, evaluated at x equals function of x0. Then take a derivative of the argument, which is function itself. This one is evaluated at this argument, at x equals uh, x0 initial point. And I recognize this as one step Jacobian in time. Evaluated with x1 is initial point, and one step Jacobian as x0 initial point. So for discrete time, we have that, you know, if I iterate n times, it's obvious how it works. Jn of x0 is j. So that's the discrete time situation. And now